A lot of people don't realize that Excel has many, many functions for date and time calculations. So let's take a look at the basics. First, we're going to start by entering a date. And then you might ask yourself, why do I need to learn to enter a date? But there are some nice tricks. And I'm going to teach you one right away. Um, I typed in 30 through 99. And that means that if you have any date between the 19, 1930 and 1999, you don't have to type that. Because if you do, let's say, uh, May 9th, and we want to do 1989, we can just do 89. And Excel just gives you 1989. So any number between 30 and 99 gives you the 1900s, right? Same thing goes for every any number between 0 and 29. That will give you the 21st century, so 2000. So let's say that we want to do... Um, June 7th, 2004, and there you go. I only need to type the four. It's just something that you can use. And then there is notation, the default Excel notation for, da for dates. There is something going on in this column, but because the column is very narrow, we can't see it right away. But if you look closer, well, Maybe this date doesn't even exist. So that's a problem. But who knows? Because it doesn't really show. If I make this wider, then we can see the problem right away. Because the default for dates is right alignment and not left. So if you see a date in a the left, then there's a problem. Well, there is because this date really doesn't exist. So that's a good thing. I wouldn't change that default setting. I would always do the column a little bit wider and then leave it like this and don't make the alignment to the left because you you obviously can do that or you can center it in any way you want because you can just use these functions there but if you just leave it at the default then you can always see if you made a typo because there could be a typo in your year maybe you just forgot something and you by accident typed only three numbers so this is an easy way to see if there are any errors in your dates Okay, now let's take it one step further. We can also do calculations, of course, because that's what Excel is for. And um, the difficulty that people have with, with dates and times is always calculations. You want to add a number of days or subtract or whatever. You want to do a lot of things with dates and time, and it's always a pain. But Excel makes it a lot easier for you. The thing to remember is that if you do date and time calculations, get the cell right. So what I mean by that is that if you click your right mouse button, you have your format cells option and make sure that you have these formats in the right uh, version. So it's not a um, general, it's a date or a time. And if you do days, so I would like to say it's 1500 days, then it's very important to check if you have it on general or a number, because then you don't want the date format. Because if I do that, and then we're going to see something, we get a date. And in this case, it's February 8th, 1904. Why is this? Why is 1500, the number 1500, this date? Well, it's too much of an explanation to go into that, but Excel uh, stores dates as a number. So, and that's how Excel calculates dates. You don't have to think about that, it's just good to know. So if you get some unexpected result, just check the cell format, get it back to general or number, and then you'll see it's 1500. Because Excel, if you do a date format here and you insert a new uh, row here, then Excel gives you a copy of that format. And if you do something else here, then just change it. Okay, let's go back to our calculation. Now we want to see when the replacement date is. So that's 1500 days into the future, right? Okay, so we purchased something on uh, March 15th. And now we want to see when we need to replace it. So that's March 15th. Plus, and the default in Excel for calculations with dates is always days. So it's really easy to do this. You can just click that one. And you say B5 plus B6. And your result is you need to replace this on April 23rd, 2019. 
And that's how easy it is. And the same thing goes for subtraction. But let's see how a, a nice little date function works first. Let's say that every time we open this Excel sheet, we want to see today and 30 days ago. And I really don't know why, but it's just something that we want. What we do then is we type a function and it's called today. So we type is today and you can just close this right away and it gives you today's date. Today is March 15th. Okay, and now we want to see what was the date 30 days ago. And if you remember from the previous example, days are always easy. So we say is this date minus 30 in this case. And 30 days ago, it was February 13th. If you want more information, so not only the date when you open the Excel sheet, but you want date and time, you can do now. And that's another function. You say is now and just tab it twice because you don't have to type anything else than the function name. And now you can see that it's March 15th, 2015 at 1230. 1232. And that's it. That's how easy it is. So let's take it one step further because there's always another thing that you need to do. And that is a difference in days. You want to see how many days were in between. Well, that's easy too, because the default response that you get from Excel is also in days. So we can just do a subtraction here. Let's say that we have these two dates and we type is and then the latest one first and then because we want to see the difference in days in a positive uh, number and then that one and then we press enter and it's four so four days well that's right because between uh, march 14th and march 18th there are four days so it's that easy if you just have this uh, cell formatted as a number and you subtract two dates by just saying cell minus other cell, then you get the number of days, a difference. Now let's do the same thing with time. So we have start in an end time and these uh, are formatted as time fields. So we can see that, well, let's say that someone started working at 9 a.m. and he finished at 5.30 p.m. Now we want to see the elapsed time. So what we do is, well, basically we do the same thing as we did here, but now with time. We say is and then this one minus h1 and we press enter. And then we get something funny because it says 830, which is great because the difference here is eight and a half hours, but it's a little bit strange to see am. Why, why is this am? Well, this is because of the formatting of the cell again. If we go here, we can see that it has this format and we don't want that. We want that one. So if you take that one and you press OK, you can see that we have 830. And now we can change anything we like, because if we make this, um, well, let's say 35, then everything is fine. Then it's eight hours and 35 minutes. So with time, it's important that you have um, your result not in AM PM format but in just an elapsed time format. Uh, and it's important that these two are formatted as time because then Excel knows, well, this is a time cell and we need to do subtraction by hours. Now let's do another time example. Here's the second one. And now we're gonna do is H6 minus H5 and there we go. Okay, so this is not what we want. We get some number 4.29. Uh, Why is that? Well, because the default in Excel is days. So this is 4.29 days. And sometimes it's just enough and you want to use this. But for human readability, it's better to have the hours. And in this case, we want the hours. So we're going back to cell formatting. Format cells. We go to time and we pick that one. That's the one we want. Hours, minutes, right? press OK and the result is seven hours. Why is that? That's not what we want because seven hours is the difference between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. of course, but there are also several 24 hour spans in this example and Excel just discarded them. 
And that's not something we want. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky because Excel doesn't help you out here. I'm just gonna show you what you need to do. You need to go to format cells and not pick that one, but we are going to pick this one. It's a different date format. And in the sample, we already can see that now we have 103, which makes a lot more sense because it's a couple of days, a couple of times 24 hours. Um, the only thing you might want to do is this is in a uh, hour, minute, second format. And if you press that one, so if you select it and you go to custom, it stays selected and you can just get rid of the seconds and just by deleting them. So we'll just delete them and then we press OK. And now we have the right formatting. So if you spend multiple days, remember to use the format where it says 37 at the beginning in the time formatting options. And these are the basics. Now let's continue with some more calculations.